JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for June the 16th. I am Harla Bospissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the dollar traded lower against all but one of the other G10 currencies on Monday and during the Asian morning Tuesday. It lost the most ground against NOC, AUD, GBP and NZD in that order, while the currency against which it underperformed the least was the Swiss franc. The greenback gained slightly only versus the Japanese yen. Now, the strengthening of uh, the risk-linked currencies OZ and Kiwi and the weakening of the safe havens dollar and uh, dollar yen and the franc suggest uh, that investors have switched to risk on trading at some point during the day. Looking at the performance of the equity markets, we see that uh, most uh, of the major EU indices closed in negative waters, perhaps due to increasing fears over a second wave in, uh, in coronavirus cases. Indeed, on Friday, global infected cases hit a new, rec a new daily record, with China seeing the most uh, serious flare-ups since February. Several US states have also seen record numbers in uh, cases and hospitalizations. Having said all that though, investors' uh, morale improved during the US session after the Fed announced to X to its um, bond purchases, widening the range of eligible assets to include all US corporate bonds. The upbeat, uh, appetite rolled over into the Asian session today with Japan's uh, Nikkei 225, China's Shanghai Composite and Hong Kong's Hang Seng gaining 4.79, 1.19 and 2.77% uh, respectively. Now as for our view, it has not changed. Although China reintroduced uh, restrictions in some areas, as long as uh, governments around the rest of the world continue to ease their lockdown measures, and as long as data continues to suggest that uh, the deep economic wounds due to the fast spreading of the coronavirus are behind us, we would see decent chances for risk uh, assets uh, to stay supported. In order to start re-examining that view, we would like to see more governments reimposing stay-at-home restrictive measures. For now, it seems that fiscal and monetary efforts to restart the engines of the global economy are, work are working uh, well enough. Today, though, market participants may stay on the lookout for fresh uh, comments by Fed Chair Powell, who delivers his semi-annual testimony on monetary policy before the Senate Banking Committee. He will deliver the same testimony tomorrow before the House uh, Financial Services Committee. Yesterday, we noted that uh, this event may not result in any fireworks, as we heard from Powell just uh, last week after the Fed's monetary policy decision. However, following yesterday's announcement over corporate bonds, investors may be eager to find out whether the Fed remains willing to do more in order to support economic activity hit by the pandemic. If so, equities and risk-linked currencies are likely to continue their journey north as investors keep uh, diverting their capital out of safe havens, the likes of uh, the US dollar, the yen and the franc. Apart from headlines surrounding the Fed and the flare-up in coronavirus infections, overnight we also had a Bank of Japan monetary policy decision. Japanese officials maintained uh, short-term interest rates at minus 0.1% and the target of uh, the 10-year government bond yields at around 0%, as was widely expected, noting that the economy will likely improve as uh, the fallout from the pandemic subsides. That said, they noted that they are likely to increase the size of money pumped out via market operations and lending facilities to combat the virus from, uh, from uh, the current 75 trillion yens to 110 uh, trillions. 
Now the yen did not react at the time of uh, the release. Perhaps as uh, yen traders kept their gaze uh, mostly locked on developments surrounding the broader market sentiment. Now as for today's events, uh, ahead of the EU Open, we already got uh, the UK employment data for April. The unemployment rate stayed unchanged at 3.9% uh, instead of rising to 4.7% as the forecast suggested, while the net change in employment showed that the economy added 6,000 jobs in the three months to April instead of losing 83,000. Average uh, earnings, though, slowed by more than anticipated. The including bonuses rate dropped to 1% year-over-year from 2.4%, while the excluding bonuses one fell to 1.7% year-over-year from 2.7%. Germany's ZW survey for June is also coming out. Both the current, condition, the current conditions and the economic sentiment indices are expected to have increased to minus 84 and 60 from uh, minus 93.5 and uh, 51 uh, respectively. Eurozone's wages and the labor cost uh, index for the first quarter are also on the agenda. As for the US data, we have retail sales, industrial and manufacturing production all for May. They are all expected to have rebounded after tumbling in April. As for tonight, uh, during, the Asian, uh, trading uh, during the Asian trading Wednesday, New Zealand's current account balance for the first quarter and Japan's trade balance for uh, May are coming out. New Zealand's current account deficit of uh, 2.66 uh, billion New Zealand dollars is forecast to have turned into a surplus of 1.48 billion uh, dollars, while Japan's trade deficit is expected to have narrowed to 560 billion yen from uh, 9, 931.9 billion. With regards to the speakers, apart from Fed Chair uh, Jerome Powell, we have another one on today's agenda, and this is Fed uh, Vice Chair Richard Clarida. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.